Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Yep. Them. I am part of them. Right? Thank you. Well, let me Can you put your way. phone on silent with that weird sound? Stop it. Be it's nice like to me. Creepy sound. <laughs> so today is a Wednesday morning for you guys. Uh, before I forget, tonight we have our Bible study at the church, which goes live. So it's going to be an online Bible study, which we always go online with it. But mm -hmm. <laughs> for those that are new, uh, every Wednesday night, because every day we do a devotional for every morning, but on Wednesday we have a Bible study that's live. So you're able to interact and ask questions or, you know, chime in, you know, chime yeah. in with things. So it's really fun. Amen. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's interesting because so many times people have told me, dude, you're ahead of your time. You're ahead of your time because we've been going online for years now. Mm hmm and now that this has happened, I have um, a lot of people asking for advice, you know, from their church and asking me a lot of advice and stuff. And which is awesome because all of this, I've been saying it for years. Amen. Um, Facebook is free. YouTube is free. Utilize it. There's, mm -hmm. And here's the thing is that here's the difference, though, because a lot of churches that do go online, it's almost like um, like a, like it's not important. But do you know how important it is for somebody in the hospital? Yeah. Absolutely. Somebody that's in a convalescent home that can't get to church. Somebody that, for whatever reason, can't, you know. Um, people are getting saved through online. And I hope this opens the eyes of all the churches out there that we can't treat online church like just some secondary thing. Mm -hmm. It is a main thing. And yeah. House of Rest, we have always believe that and always held that you know it's whether part it's, of the life support yeah whether mm -hmm. it's it's our facebook instagram youtube um whatever it is your website that stuff is really key and really important you know to to reach the masses because that's what the great commission i is. think it, it goes hand in hand and what's really great is because when we have our the physical church it's beautiful because they give the online presence that that feeling of mm -hmm. really being in church. It, it's a welcoming yeah. environment. They make it so welcoming for them and create an environment, an atmosphere, yeah. which is important. But here's the thing. Now that the church is closed, um, now we have the online church who is here to support and to and to now be exactly what they were mm -hmm. at that one point and now we can be on this end it's like everybody is coming together yeah and we're still creating that environment you're still yeah. creating that atmosphere and and that's that's what's pretty amazing because re truly realistic we're all one together yeah. but we're actually literally collectively coming yeah. together and creating a bigger environment and yeah. a bigger atmosphere and then there's always there's there's um uh things that stop and hinder for instance one thing is a lot of churches want to go online on youtube uh youtube will not let you live stream unless you have a thousand subscribers so again there it is everybody trying to scramble to do something that you should have established a long time ago wow. yeah you know another thing that came to my attention just now there's a lot of people are asking me, why is our church service being erased off of Facebook? Yeah. Because since most churches don't have a thousand subscribers on YouTube, their only other way is to go live on Facebook. Here's the problem with Facebook. is Facebook does not want to pay any money out, any publishing. See, if you own a song, nobody can play it. Like, do you know that if somebody owns a bar and they have a jukebox, they have to pay money to play Every single artist, it's just pennies. But imagine all the malls. Imagine when you walk in a store, all the songs in every mall, every bar, every pool hall, every whatever. That money, um, ASCAP or BMI, they gather those pennies and pay out artists. So Facebook doesn't want to pay nobody out. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they will not let you play copywritten music on the Facebook Live, and a lot of people well, didn't know and, that. And well, and when we say play, because I do worship, um, 
we can't, that means you can't even really sing it either. Yeah. You know, you actually have to put something, even if it's just an instrumental and you're singing worship along to it, they will silence it. Yeah. They will remove it. Yeah. Um, we pay for um, a whole multi-tracks. We actually pay monthly dues every month to buy our instrumentals. We pay for that. But it, that, see, that doesn't matter. That's through a whole different, a whole different program, yeah. a whole different vendor. So we can't even play those instrumentals that we pay yeah. for on there. Yeah. So there, it's not, it's nothing towards you guys directly, or or they're not hating on the church or anything like that. Um, Facebook but, just don't want to get sued. Yes, they're it, they're liability issues, mm. you know. And I really think that we got to take that into consideration. Um, and I think that's why we start for us. Service starts when you're about to give the word on or Facebook. announcements on yeah, Facebook. But see, you guys are YouTube viewers. You get to watch the whole worship. Yeah. Here's the beauty of it. YouTube does allow us to play copywritten music. You know how you see commercials on YouTube? So that's how they make their money. People advertise on YouTube. And they pay that money out to the artists or to mm -hmm. the record companies, to the publishing companies. That is why on YouTube, you guys get to see the whole service from beginning to end. But Facebook people, we don't start that camera until after announcements. Announcements, yeah. After yeah. announcements. And that is why. Now, there's a la this last Sunday, I played it from the beginning, Facebook. And actually, they let it slide. I don't understand why, but they did. But... Um, uh, that is not a good thing to do because I've done that before and they would just erase my whole yeah. sermon and yeah. it's it's done. It's gone. Yeah. You know, but um, a lot of people were messaging me saying, why is my church thing? Why is, what's going on? And, and like this big old conspiracy like Facebook's all against Christians. No, they just don't want to. They don't want to get sued. Yeah. They don't want to get sued and they don't want to pay money to the publishers. Yeah, it Facebook, makes sense. Facebook's trying to make money, not give money away. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so that's kind of what um, I just wanted to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we guys. hope that explains a little bit of, of that. You yeah. know, and I think that's why we're really careful too that we wait until right after we do um, like offering and all of that as well because we actually play just an instrumental during offering time. Mm -hmm. So like literally right after offering is a meet and greet and we kind of start everything then we around. put Facebook then Live. we start everything around meet and greet because um mm. we already know it's happened to us as well um and we kind of know before they used to silence it remember mm. like you just could not hear anything now they are removing stuff and i think because of the overwhelmness of yeah. what's happening right now th it's easier for them to remove them than to edit the, the sound yeah. out yeah. so and it makes sense because you know a lot of big companies are shorthanded right now and they're doing so much yeah so it, it's totally understandable yeah so we hope that helps you guys um yeah. for those who are going live yeah and and make sure you um let your your pastors your worship leaders even mm -hmm. if you got tell them hey guys you don't have to watch this whole devotional but watch the first seven minutes and they explain about it from the let them know hey there's this church that they've been online for nine years so maybe they can learn something from this and we just want to pass that along because we want our fellow brothers and sisters our fellow pastors uh, to be able to to broadcast their services you know and we yeah. don't want we don't want them to get blocked the only time that i have seen when they don't do that is whenever it's a live band and they're actually singing an original or something yeah. that's not copywritten or anything like that that's when i've seen that they've left yeah. stuff yeah because if they hear music that it knows in the database it'll flag it mm -hmm. that's it what flags happens. it yeah. absolutely so i pray that you guys had an amazing day um I know for us, it's been a lot of, I know David's been working really hard on getting this weekend going, um, talking, we've, we've been talking to a lot of people. Um, I know he has in mm -hmm. regards to the workshops, the teachings. Yeah, but I want to talk about it after. Okay. Yeah. But um, I did want to say, you know, I know you, a lot of you guys probably received um, a message from me, you know, the Lord has been waking me up lately, like at four o'clock in the morning, you know, and it has just been in my heart to, you know, to just, you know, David's sleeping and I'm just like spiritually praying for a lot of you. And um, I'm sorry if I woke you up because I did wake you up. A lot of you got woken up like at 530 this morning with my with my message. But um, God has just been giving me such a beautiful peace about a lot of things. And I just, you know, wanted to take a time to say hello to so many of you. So if you get messages from me, do not be surprised. Um, because God has really been waking me up at the same exact time. And then as soon as David wakes up, I go back to sleep. Hmm. <laughs> Have you noticed? 
It's like by the time you're waking up, I'm ready going back to sleep for another hour or two. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's why I'm sleeping. How would I in. notice you're awake if I'm asleep? Because you wake up, and the moment you wake up, I go back to but sleep. That, that makes me believe you're just sleeping. How would I notice? Oh, well, I wake up. Yeah, I wouldn't notice. That'd be weird. Well, they know because they're they're talking to me like so, at that time. So um, we're already 10 minutes in here. So um, I wanted to talk about this scripture that Sharon had showed me a little while ago. And um, I want to say this. I want to talk about this real quick and explain. There's two classes of belief systems when you read the Bible. One is you can't read the promises to Israel. Those are promises to you, you know, because those are promises to Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens, though, is that falls into a slippery slope. I'll tell you why. Because, yes, there are certain instances in the Old Testament that those were for the Jewish people at that time. Okay, but for the most part, the heart of the promises of God, um, if you go to the belief that the Old Testament promises are not yours, well, now you have really um, limited yourself. And then they'll say, and the Gospels of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are for the Jews of that time. That was before the cross. So now you make it even smaller and you end up with the books of Paul. Mm. And that's it. Mm. Um so that's one belief. Another belief is where I stand is that the promises of God are yours because even though we are not physically Jews, we are his people. Because the Bible says that Abraham out of Abraham, um, um, uh, uh, many nations will come from. Mm -hmm. Nations, plural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many nations will come from him. And the Bible says that Abraham is the father of faith. Okay. And before we read this scripture, I wanted to read another scripture first, actually, to kind of... Where um, are we going to? Uh, 2 Corinthians. Oh, man. What was it again? <laughs> you even oh, marked it. Oh, there it is. It. Yeah. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, before we read into the Old Testament. Chapter 1, verse 20. Okay. And it says this. And goes 20 to 22. This is what Paul wrote. I might, yeah, I might read 22. It says, now he, oh, wait, I'm sorry, 20. For all the, all the promises of God in him, in Jesus, are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. You going to or no? He okay. said 22. Oh, 22? Mm -hmm. Who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Amen. I'm reading out of the Message Bible. So I'll start with 20. Whatever God has promised gets stamped with a yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen. God's yes and our yes together. Gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. Yeah. So the promises of God. So there's a such word as a graft. A graft is when you take a stick from a different tree and you graft it into this one. You kind of grind this one and you grind a part into that tree and you graft it. And after a while, it'll stick and become part of that tree. Yeah. And they intertwine together. Yeah. So the New Testament says Israel is that tree because out of Israel, the promises of God and us that believe in Christ are grafted into the tree of Israel. So that is why we can go to the Old Testament like we're about to do and read the promises of God. I just wanted to set that Amen. up. Amen. That's good. I like that. Okay. So we're going to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26. Is it 16 through 19? Um, 26. I know. Hold on. I always have to go back for some yeah, reason. I know. Uh, yeah, 16 all the way to 19. Okay. So Deuteronomy, this is Old Testament. Actually, this is uh, the books of Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. And it says this. It says, this day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore, you shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today, you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments 
and that you will obey his voice. Also, today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments. Last verse, and that he will set you high above all nations, which he has made in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. In the message, it reads, This very day, God, your God, commands you to follow these rules and regulations, to live them out with everything you have in you. You've renewed your vows today that God is your God, that you'll live the way he shows you. Do what he tells you in the rules, regulations, and commandments, and listen obediently to him. And today God has reaffirmed that you are dearly held treasure, just as he promised. A people entrusted with keeping his commandments, a people set high above all other nations that he's made, high in praise, fame, and honor. You're a people holy to God, your God. That's what he has promised. So... In the context of this, he's talking to the people of Israel, the, you know, the, the people of, of uh, that were s- saved out of slavery, saved out of Egypt, saved from captivity. And he's like, listen, you guys have made a vow to God. Yeah. You've made a promise. You said that he would be your God, that you would follow the things that he says, that you would follow his statutes, his ordinances, his law, his judgments that that you would follow him he goes so today because you've done that he will proclaim you his special people you know so this is a promise just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments and he goes if you do that he will set you high above all the nations and in praise and name and in honor that you will be a holy people to the lord your god okay so this is a beautiful thing but it's a two-way street here. Mm-hmm. See, for whatever reason, in the Western world, we're like, oh yeah, gee, if I go, if I ask a hundred people right now, if they um, follow Jesus, they're gonna say yeah. Um, but they're sitting there. That their actions speak. Doing different. drugs, cheating, lying, stealing. You know, you go to jail. Everybody's a Christian. You know, everybody, and it's like. You go on the streets, everybody's a Christian because being a Christian, we 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 westernize it. Yeah. And what is he saying here? He's saying, if you're gonna give your life and dedicate your life, then you're gonna follow everything. You're gonna he abide says. by all those things. Yes, you're going yeah. to live by this. And if if you do these things, then you will be a special people. He will set you high above the nations and he will be the Lord your God and you will be God's people. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes here in the United States, we think, and unfortunately, a lot of churches are guilty of this. They'll say, Yo, all you got to do is say this prayer. Yeah. Just say this prayer, dude. Just say, uh, I repent of my sins. Um, I believe you died on the cross and after three days you rose again. Live inside of me. Uh, amen. And then the person be like, man, you're saved. Welcome to the kingdom. That is like getting married and saying the vows and going to a strip club right after. Mm. Let that set in. Yeah, that's heavy. What you say in your vows means nothing if you live every day after that completely against those vows yeah. so when you make a, when you make a, and this is crazy you're making a vow to your spouse that's just for a lifetime until your heart stops beating but the words you make unto the lord is for eternity, for eternity. so matter of fact yeah. the vow you make unto god is actually heavier yeah. than the vow you make to your spouse Amen. so so many people make this little sinner's prayer and then they live any way they want yeah you know, and I've often said, I've often said, I've often heard, I, I can't remember who I heard it from. I think it was when I was in prison, I used to listen to preachers all the time. There was a, a radio station, and one guy, he said, um, the most important day of your marriage is not your wedding day. It's the last day. He goes, it's the last day. Yeah. He was when you or your spouse are on your deathbed, and they can say, thank you. 
You yeah, know, that's the most important day. I, I believe that. And, you know, it's it's crazy because a lot of people do. Um, the first thing they, they want to think is like, you know, you need salvation because tomorrow's not promised. But here's the thing. They get saved and then tomorrow comes and they get through tomorrow. And they think that literally because tomorrow was mm. did come and is already done with. Yeah. They think that let me go back to the way things were. And it's like. They think that getting through that first day is is all it really is, but it's not. It's it's a lifetime. It's a it's commitment. A lifetime commitment. You know, um, it's doing a three hundred and sixty. It's changing your ways. It's you know living um, by His commandments. I mean, do you, wouldn't you want to be called God's special people? Yeah. Wouldn't you be want to call God's special daughter, God's special son? You know, and, and so in other words, there's things that come with that. That is not Old Testament. That is God. Yeah. And people want to say, oh, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. That's God's testament. And I'm like, <laughs> um, no, matter of fact, Jesus didn't make it easier. He actually raised the standard. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Old Testament says thou shalt not murder. Jesus says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Wow. Yeah. Old Testament says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus says, if you even look at a woman, you've committed adultery. Does not. So I don't understand this thing yeah, where Jesus. in the heart and all that. I, yeah. Where does this thing come where Jesus makes it easier? He makes it harder. And I, I'm going to explain why. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to explain why. So that's why it, it doesn't it, it doesn't hold water when people say, well, that's the Old Testament. I'm like, really? You want to follow the things of Jesus? Because it's even stricter. And you know, it's crazy because in the Old Testament, people would die physically, you know, yeah. by not following God's yeah. law, you know, so you would think that it's harder in the Old Testament, but it's really not. No, no. Yeah, it's so, not. For those of you that are saying, well, pff, I can't be a Christian then. You know why Jesus raised the standards to an impossible height? So you can finally realize and say, God, I can't do it. Hmm. And he'll say, Exactly. That's why I went to the cross to do it for you. Wow, that's good. That is why. Now, so he took a beating, took nails in his hand and nails in his feet. 39 lashes. They say when they put you on the cross, they will stretch your chest out that you couldn't breathe unless you put weight on your feet. But yet your feet had this long nail through it. So every time, every breath Jesus had to take, was excruciating pain through his body just for that one breath. Okay. So how dare we say, well, if he paid it for me, that means I can live any way I want. Mm. No, you know what you're doing? You're spitting on the cross. And you're, you're digging that nail deeper. You're saying, Lord, you know, you, you did it. You did it. So I'm going to do this. And it's like, no, that is not honoring God. Honoring God is saying, Lord, you did this for me when I was still a sinner. Undeserving. That's what the that's what the word grace yes, comes from. He found us worthy enough, you know. Grace. He loved us. Grace means something, you getting something you do not deserve. The Bible says he loved us before we ever even loved him. Yeah, so much grace and mercy upon us. Yeah, and, and so I, I don't understand or comprehend. That even though Jesus raised the stakes, he did it to show us that we can't do it without him. Yet he says, I'll, I'll pay it. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. And here, what a beautiful thing that he's saying. All you got to is follow me, follow my statutes, and you will be my special person. And yet when we realize when he says you can't come up to this level because you need me, he comes down to our level to meet us. Yeah. You know, to meet us where we're at. I remember that every single time from one time that you did this one oh, sermon. Yeah, with John. Yeah, and you stepped, you stepped, you were on the top stair and yeah. you literally stepped down. And ever since that day, I just envisioned because every time that I feel like, God, are you, it's so, un he's so unreachable, but yet then he's there, he comes down to meet me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just think of that every single time. Yeah, exactly. It was it was impossible for us to reach heaven. Yeah. So heaven has reached down to us. Yeah. Do you realize how massive that is for that would be like and and it's not even in comparison for for the president 
to love you so much, but there's no way for you to get to Washington, no way for you to get into the White House, past the Secret Service, past all the... There's no way because you're a criminal, right? Because in sin, we're criminals. So we're criminals. There's no way. So the president says, you know what? He can't come see me, so I'm going to go see him. I'm going to go see her. Takes the suit off, takes everything off, leaves the limo, jumps into you know a little Honda Accord and goes down to your city and your neighborhood and comes and knocks on your door and says, I want to eat with you. That's, you know, and, and, and Jesus is a million times, many more than a president or king. And he leaves his throne, leaves his glory, yeah. tells the angels to stay here, takes off his glory and his authority and steps into humanity. And we're like, why, why would you do that? And he says, because I want to break bread with you. You know, and, and there's a choice of, you know, if he really wanted to, he could come wrathfully, but he comes with so much meekness. Yeah. You know, because he can destroy and he can do all of it, but he doesn't. He loves us and he can come so meekly to us. Yeah. And just love us with that unconditional love. It, it's just, it just blows my mind. And, and it's an amazing thought, you know, that, and yes. that is why, like, I said this, I said this a few times, I didn't come to Christ because I was afraid of hell. I felt like I was in hell in prison. I came to Christ because even though everything I had done, he still loved me. He still wanted me and he still accepted me. It wasn't about, I want to, oh, I'm ready to accept you, Lord. It was about, you're accepting me? Yeah. That is what brought me to him. That is what brought me to him is his love, is his, I, I, I wasn't scared into the kingdom. I was loved into the kingdom. You know, it's, it's almost unbelievable because it's like, man, after I rejected you, after yeah. I turned my back on you, after I did things deliberately in front of you you know you still want me you know yeah and it's like it's almost like a child it's almost like your child who does something crazy like you know and they're your child they they you know you love them mm -hmm. and <laughs> but the child is so afraid and so scared because to them it's something that is so great and big that they did that they feel like they don't even deserve forgiveness for it yeah and you come and you say, come, let me, you know, hold you and you love them. And you're just like, but why? I don't deserve that love. Yeah. You know, I hurt you. I, 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 I was really bad. I misbehaved. I did this. And, you know, and it's the same thing, the same way God has entrusted our children for us to love them unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally. And that is why Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, those who are heavy laden and you're tired. Yes. And I will give you rest. You know, what does he mean by that? He, he says this parable, and many of you know it, but may, maybe some of you don't, or you need to hear it all over again, where he says, the shepherd will leave the 99. He'll leave his 99, and he'll go search for the one. And he goes and calls out his name, and calls out his name or her name. And when he finds her, he doesn't stop. Yeah. And when he finds her, he puts the little lamb over his shoulders and takes it home. And some of you have been that lost lamb and you're in the darkest places of your life and he is seeking out your name. He's yelling out your name in the canyons. He's, he's yelling out your name in the valleys and in the dark places. How do I know that? This is how he does it with a video like this. Yes. Right here, right now. This, this message is for somebody and he's calling to you and he's calling to you and he refuses to go home until he brings you home. Amen. You know, there's no way if you lost a child in the store, at what point do you say, eh, I can't find no, him. I'm done. Let me just go home. No. It's not going to happen. You'd be relentless. Yeah. Just that's, like the song says. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that song. Yeah, that's why that song, Reckless Love. I've heard a lot of Christians say, oh, God's love isn't reckless. No, you're taking it wrong. Hear mm -hmm. the spirit of it. If you lost your child at Walmart or Target. I'd be reckless. I'd be recklessly going through things, recklessly looking. I would Whew. tear down 
that Walmart. Yes. I would destroy every aisle. I would leave that place like a tornado hit it. Not because I'm reckless, but I'm so recklessly looking for my child. That's why I love that song, Reckless Love, because he will destroy everything just to get to you. Amen. He will. Yeah. He will, you know. And I believe that during this time, during this, this season of what we're going through, he's recklessly Amen. looking. You know, he's looking for you. And he will turn over every couch, every hidden place, every cave, every dark corner. Just to find you. Yeah. Because he wants us to he wants you to be his special people. That's what this verse is saying. That's pretty much it. That's powerful. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I love him. Yeah. You know, I um, love Jesus so much. So many so many times people say, Man, when I see Jesus, I'm gonna hug him or I'm gonna shout. I d I don't we don't know. I don't I don't know, but I think that in all honesty, he's a holy God. I I don't think there's nothing else to do but fall at his feet. Yeah. Because even though he has thrown away your sins as far as the east is from the west and thrown them into the deepest ocean, he says. Even though he says he erases all your sin and all your past and throws away, he says he doesn't hold it against you. Yeah. But here's the problem. You remember your sins, and I remember my sins. So when I stand before a holy God, I, 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 I feel like I'm going to fall at his feet because he's my Lord, he's my King, he's my Savior. <laughs> And I just want to, I want that day, which I, I hope is a long time from now, <laughs> but whenever that day happens, that he says, well done. You did good, son. That's all I want to hear. Amen. <laughs> so all too. I want to hear is to make him proud. proud. Yes. Amen. You know, today, um, this morning, when I got a chance to message um, a lot of our family, you know, I received a lot of prayer requests. Yeah. And um, I just want to collectively together right now for us to pray. You know, we're praying for um, a family in Merced, for the whole family. We're praying. Sister Teresa, we're praying for you. I just want to know. They're going to be unspoken prayers, but I would like to say who we're praying for. Brother Alejandro, we're praying for your family member that just went to the hospital today. Um, Sister Phyllis, we're, we have a lot of people that... I didn't realize that yeah. are actually on the front line of a lot of what's going on. A lot of healthcare workers, a lot of people that are even out there in, in the test areas where they're swabbing people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, people that are working in hospitals. I, I didn't realize how many, you know, collectively family, you know, that we have from our church family, online family that actually do work in industries where they're still out there, you know, yeah. and having to go back and forth. Um, you know, and Sister Frances, we're keeping you in prayer. Sister Rachel, you know, we're, we're keeping um, Caden in prayer. Uh, Sister Lisa, we're keeping your husband in prayer. You know, there's a lot of people. And um, we're going to continue praying for these. I'm going to definitely forward these also to the intercessory prayer team. And we're just going to continue pressing forward and continue praying for every single one of them. But I know that you're going to watch this. And I want you to know that as you as you're watching this, I want you to just put your hand over your heart and think of that loved one. Think of the person that you're praying for. Think of yourself. Pray for yourself. Put your hand over your heart because we're going to pray for you and we're going to continue praying for you guys um, because this is what we need to be doing right now. So just collectively, we can just pray for them together. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Father God, we just want to thank you right now, Lord, for allowing us to be here at this moment, Father. And Father, you know every single prayer request that has been spoken here today, Father. And I pray, Father, that you begin to have your hand upon them, Father, upon their health, upon their loved ones, upon their homes, upon every situation that surrounds them, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just take full control of every circumstance, every situation, everything that surrounds them, Lord. Father, they are in your hands, Father. 
the the medics father the people that are out there the nurses father the people that are on the front line lord i pray father that you cover them father and that you keep them father safe from all harm from all the things father that are negative father we know that you're in control father anybody out there father that is not feeling healthy anybody that is feeling any type of medical thing that's going on within their life right now father we ask that you just begin father to work from head to toe within their body every blood vessel every lung father every organ father we ask you right now to lift up right now to liven up right now in the name of jesus because father you are the master physician and we know lord that you're in control of their lives father for every single person out there that is suffering any type of addiction father going through anything right now father that is just has this a hold on them right now we release it right now in the name of jesus father father we thank you father we ask you father to take control of the lives father that are watching this youtube right now lord that you just begin father to to give them a new desire father give them new visions new dreams new things father for them to look forward to lord because we know that only you only you're the one that can come, Father, and, and take the things that are not of you and fill them, Father, with life. Fill them with things of you, Father, that will just give us new things to look forward to. We pray for this nation at this time, Father. We place every government official in your hands, Father. Yes. Soften the hearts of every person, Father, that cannot see and that are using anything, Father, to, to keep from bringing forth the people that you have called, Father, Lord Jesus. We thank you in advance, Father, because we know, Father, that every outcome that takes place in this world, Father, it's because you have allowed it, Father. It's because it's your hand that's on every single heart, Father, that is to move forward in this country. And we thank you for that, Father. We love you when we praise you. There's no one like you, Lord. We may be on lockdown, Father, but your word will never be locked down, Father. Your word will always be, and you can get rid of every single book there is in this world but your word your word will live in our hearts forever lord and we thank you when we love you when we praise you in the precious mighty name of jesus i lift up every prayer out there as well father that that is seeking prayer father we ask that you be with them father we ask that you meet the necessities father that you bless every home father that you fill them with all their needs father that you sustain them father we, we ask, Father, for those who are seeking salvation, those who just want a relationship, Father, that they will reach out to you, Father, in these times of trouble, Father, that you will give them peace in their heart, that you will give them peace in, in their mind, Father. I ask them also, Father, that you just begin to, to bring families together, to bring their loved ones together, Father. In these moments, Father, where it's no, most needed more than anything, Lord, I pray, Father, that you bring families together, that you, Father, collectively and individually grow them in such a way, Father, that they can be an example and exemplify who you are, Father, to those who do not know you, Lord. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, Father. Amen. 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 Um, last two minutes, guys. Uh, the flyer is done. This channel is going to be really busy <coughs> Friday, Saturday, and of course Sunday morning for service. Um, if you don't, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, because by being a subscriber to this channel, which I'm not sure where, it depends if you're in a laptop, a tablet, or your phone. There's a subscribe button maybe below us or inside of us. It's on the right side usually. It, well, it's different. It's different. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. It's different. So regardless uh, um, what device you're on, it's going to be in a different place. So the point is, though, by being a subscriber, what it does is it alerts you every single time we go live. It lets you know right then and there. So we want to make sure that you get the alerts because we're going to be busy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have different speakers, different uh, workshops, Bible studies, teachings, sermons. And um, I'm going to put the flyer up here, but unfortunately, it's not. It's it's a long flyer. It's not. You're not going to be able to zero in on it. Uh, but... If you email us, put your email down. We will send you that flyer Amen. so you can see it. In, the schedule. In, so you can see the schedule. Yeah. So you'll see a portion of the flyer on here, but it's not the whole flyer. But we can also put it on the website. So if you go to the website, yeah. we, we can actually put it yeah, on actually, the website Yeah, actually, i got to well. add, add it to the website. Yeah, so we'll add that today, www. 
dot house of rest church dot com. Yeah. And you will put it there. So Yeah, this is gonna it's 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 gonna be a lockdown. Uh, different speakers, all in different locations. I have people, a pastor from Reno doing it, a pastor from Hanford doing it, a brother from Livingston. I mean, all over the place, remotely from their different areas. But Friday night's in the end at the church with the service. Saturday night's in the end with the service and Sunday morning service. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. We love you guys. God bless. And see you for Bible study tonight. Amen.